Welcome to a brand new episode of Tapper TV. I'm your host, Mikaji Hawkins, and today I have a very special guest with a very, very long list of accomplishments, which include being a three-time All-American, including a one-time first-team All-American selection, a three-time first-team All-Conference defensive back, two-time SOCOM Player of the Month, 320 career tackles, which is second all-time in Mercer history, 11 career interceptions, which is first all-time in Mercer history, a Buck Buchanan Award finalist, an already one-time college graduate on the way to getting his master's with a 3.3 GPA, a spring 2022 initiate of the Theta Pi chapter of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, my big homie, <laughs> my pro fight, Lance Wise Jr. is in the building. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Sound effect. Sound effect. Sound, no, uh, how you, you doing? Thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, it's good to be back. I appreciate you so much for joining me, man. We're going to get into a little bit about your journey, but how you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. You know, pro day just ended. Right, uh, right. I felt like, you know, there were some numbers that I wanted to hit that mm -hmm. were a little bit, you know, better. Like, I wanted to be a f faster 40 time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I surprised myself. I was really smooth in footwork and drills. You know, I jumped to 38 inch vertical, so it was mm -hmm. nothing but a blessing. For sure, for sure. And that's that's the part that I wanted to jump into first. We'll get back to the history in a minute, but you're coming off of a pro day, man. I want you to give everybody who's listening a little bit of insight on what it took to get there. What, how, did, how did you prepare for pro day? Oh, you know, pro day preparation was insane, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, I was down in Florida, uh, January 1st, actually, and I was down there training for three months. Uh, and it's not your normal training. So, like, right now I'm in the best shape that I've ever been in my whole life. And, you know, there's I worked out three times a day mm. for about five five days a week, maybe six sometimes. Mm. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that I couldn't eat. So, you know, the fast foods, the milkshakes, all that, couldn't eat too many carbs. You know, it was going to be bad. So, at this point, I'm changing my whole lifestyle that I lived for the past five years. You know, the cookouts and Waffle Houses <laughs> and Subway. You know, I'm switching those out with... You know, broccoli and salmon. Right. I'm not gonna say it wasn't good, but you know, it was it was a quite a shocker. You know, right. I, I love soda, and I had to cut that out. And no juice except for orange juice. So, you know, it was it was definitely a a task at hand. But it was fun though. I enjoyed it. What was the biggest adjustment going from you know college football to preparing to be a professional? Uh, rest and recovery. Mm. Uh, I realized that I had to make sure that my body was right to perform because if my body's not ready. How can scouts or people that want to come see me play, if I want to go play there, availability is the best thing I can have for myself, especially coming from a smaller school. So if I'm hurt in any circumstance, then, you know, how can I showcase my talents to anybody that wants to see? Right. I read off the long list of accomplishments that you had being a Mercer Bear, right? You did all of that, like you said, on a different diet, a different workout regimen, not probably knowing some of the things that you know now. What do you think? is going to be the biggest change for you now going through what you've gone through training. And by that, I mean, we saw what you were able to do pretty much out here on your own. Now you're getting the best of the best as far as training. You're getting the best of the best as far as recovery, dietary needs. How far do you think you can see yourself going now that you have all of these resources on top of the natural ability that you had before? Oh, um, you know, I want to go as far as the Lord allows me to go. Uh, my goal is to not only make it to the league, be one of the best defensive backs in the league, and ultimately try to submit my name as one of the all-time greats. Right. Uh, and it, it's going to be a jump, but there's a jump from high school to college mm -hmm. where everybody was that guy at their high school, which is why they ended up playing college ball. Now it's you were that guy in college or a better than that guy in college, which got your shot at the league. So really the talent is just you got to step up. And I'm never going to be a, a back down from mm -hmm. a challenge. You know, right. I've had teammates that were in the league. I played against people that are in the league now. So, you know, and I can play with them. I can hang with them. So at this point, I was betting on myself. But I'm going to go as far as the Lord's going to let me. Absolutely. Uh, you talked about coming from a smaller school. You played five years here at Mercer. Uh, Hill Grove High School, am I correct? Yes. I want you to give the people a little bit of story time on how you wind up at Mercer. Oh, man. So uh, Mercer is actually my first offer. You know, okay. we'll get into that. Um, I had a friend. His name is John Thomas. He also played here at Mercer. You know, we were coming, we were the, we were two guys. It was a group of us, but John and I were the two guys that were getting looked, mm -hmm. but maybe not looked like Miles Murphy, who now plays for Cincinnati, or Jalen McCullough, who was the safety at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You know, we were still getting looked at, but, you know, we were more on the smaller school st spectrum. So, you know, Mercer was my first offer. Uh, at this point, you know, I'm playing against B.J. Ojolari, 
I'm playing against Harrison Bailey, Ramel Keaton. I have Chig, who's a tight end for the Titans now. He's mm -hmm. on my team. So the scouts are coming to see, you know, mm -hmm. because we have players. We played against players every year or every week. Is he going to 7 Yes, yeah, 7 okay, yeah. So in our region was us, McEachern, Marietta, North Cobb, North Paulding. But, you if you know, know anything about Georgia high school sports. Yeah, like 7A seven eight, seven eight was is, is that. It's top of the top. Top of, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? We never back down from no challenge, especially on that football field. Mm -hmm. And those are some great players who are going to do some amazing things in their career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we always had the scouts come look and the recruiters come look. But, you know, being a, a little shorter guy, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of harder for me to get the looks that everybody else is getting. But I kept my head down and kept going. You know, I ended up having nine interceptions in my senior year of high school. And so Mercer was my first offer. And as you know, they're a great academic school. Correct. They're close to home. It's about an hour and a half from my home, and my mother loved it here. So, right. you know, that's where that's how I ended up here at Mercer. So you just talked about being undersized, playing in the biggest region or classification in Georgia high school sports. Um, you being undersized obviously isn't new to you going from high school to college, and now you're preparing to go to the NFL. Talk to me a little bit about, about your mentality, being an undersized DB and, you know, how you prepare yourself mentally, you know, the things that you've heard from scouts or other players or other coaches that you know what, you say, you know what, maybe I'm undersized, but watch this. How, how do you prepare yourself mentally? You know, I, I don't even care about my size. And, you know, I, at first I did when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're, you're too small to play college ball for us, and we're not going to recruit you because you're smaller. But you turn on the tape, I don't look like I'm undersized. I look right. like I belong out there and I'm playing just as tough, if not tougher than everybody else. Mm -hmm. But what I lack in height, you know, I make up in my speed, my agility, my playmaking skills. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I can be short or smaller than everybody else than your six foot receiver, but I'm still going to be there making the plays like Buda Baker. Buda Baker isn't 6'1, he's right. not just six, but he's one of the top safeties in the league. Right. So what's stopping me from becoming what he is or better, you know? So. Being short, I don't really care about it. You know, the Lord blessed me with my body, and I'm thankful for it. Mm -hmm. And I just take what he gives me, and I use it to the best of my ability. Valid, valid, valid. Uh, we talked a little bit about how you wind up at Mercer. Again, I read off your accomplishments that you were able to rack up here at Mercer. Do me a favor and talk about your career here at Mercer. What do you think allowed you to be so successful at the college level? I never gave up. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you can – you can say or, you know, people can talk about. But, you know, I came in, I was, I came in behind a fifth year senior. Mm -hmm. So he had one more year and I learned from him. And honestly, I became a better person off the field, which allowed me to become a better player on the field. Right. And, you know, I credit that to him, my coaches that, you know, never gave up on me because there were times where I didn't want to play anymore. Mm -hmm. There were times where I was ready to, you know, go home and just be a regular person, get a regular job. but. You know, I sat down and I told myself that I wasn't going to give up. You know, at the end of the day, you, you fall in love with the game. You don't fall in love with the results. So it doesn't matter how my career played out here, I would have been enjoyed it because I still love the game. Mm -hmm. So my career here was actually, you know, really well. You know, I broke some records. And, you More know, than that. <laughs> More <laughs> than that. I'm not. I've made some lifelong friends who are now called my brothers mm -hmm. on that football field. You know, I still text some of my teammates from my freshman year that have been gone right. to this day. So. You know, at, at this point, for me, my career here was more just about football. It was about the life that I built and the relationships that I made on that field. Staying, staying on the topic of football, you talked about the jump high school to college, college to the NFL. What was that jump like for you, high school to college? Uh, but like I said earlier, you know, I'm playing against, you know, power five guys, guys who are in the league every week. So when I got here, you know, everybody was the guy, but mm -hmm. all I had to do was just believe in myself. Obviously, they were stronger than me because, you know, you're an 18-year-old kid coming in playing against some of the 20, 21-year-olds. Mm. So, obviously, you know, you get bigger, stronger, faster. But my mentality never changed. I'm not going to shy down and be like, oh, my God, you're so-and-so and you're so – like, no. At the end of the day, we put our pants on the same, put our helmet on the same, and you still got to hit somebody. So, Where do you think that mindset comes from? Because there are a lot of athletes who either didn't have that mindset early or they don't have it at all. Do you, can, does that come from maybe a coach, family member? Where do you get that from? Coach, family member, friends, cousins, all the same. It's all the same to me. Right. When I was a child, you know, we had a, a football team. My, my, we were the Douglasville Tire Cubs. It was crazy because our football team was our basketball team. Like, same kids. Right. Which was our track team. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're going around playing everybody in every sport, but we're not going back down. We used to play up. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm, 
I'm nine years old playing with the 11 to 12-year-olds, but I'm not finna back down because you're bigger than me. Right. So, you know, that kind of just instilled it in me because, like, you could you could have all the talent in the world, but if your mindset ain't right, then how can you perform? Mm -hmm. And you can't shout, you can't shout out from nobody. You a grown man at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was. So how do you prepare yourself now? You're, you're getting ready to enter the NFL draft. Um, you know, you see your name tied to a couple of teams. I don't know if you've talked to any teams already or in recent, you know, time. However, you're not one of the guys who is protected to be lottery. You know what I'm saying? But you've got film that can compete with the best of the best. Right. You know what I'm saying? You've got the records. You've got the numbers. You've even got some of the measurements. However, you don't see your name in the same conversations as some of those guys that came from bigger schools. How do you compartmentalize that mentally? How do you stay focused and try to not let that distract you or discourage you? Uh, all you need is a shot to get your foot in the door. I, I don't care if I get drafted first round, seventh round, undrafted free agent signing, or I get invited to a rookie mini camp. Right. If I can get my foot in the door and prove I belong, that's all I need. All I need is a shot. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'll be blessed to get a shot however it may fall. But, you know, obviously I didn't go to your Georgia, your Alabama, Ohio State. I didn't go to those big schools. So I'm already at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And even at the FCS level, I didn't go to the South Dakota States, North Dakota States. Mm -hmm. I, like, I'm not at one of those top schools that play and compete with the FCS or at the FBS teams. Right. So it's like coming from where I'm coming from, I knew that it was going to be harder for me to get a shot anyway, which is why the film – and some of the measurables that I have spoke for itself. So, you know, realistically, all I need is a shot. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I, that's what I tell anybody that comes talk to me and asks me, and is like, how do you feel you coming from Mercer? Mm -hmm. I just need a shot to get my foot in the door. Right. Um, you talk about being recruited by lower level schools. What other offers did you have? Uh, I, had, I only had five offers coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Army, Air Force, Columbia, Kent State, and Mercer. Columbia in that's the yeah, Ivy League? Yeah. Uh, was that I, an option? Did you visit there? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't like it being I don't like being cold. That's and too far from that. It was too far from the crib or is it too cold? It's too cold, one. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't really my thing was I'm not a big distance guy. So like Yeah, you like to be close to If I if I could have went somewhere farther, like I would have. Mm -hmm. But like it would have to, I'd have to go sideways or down. Like I'm not going up. You don't uh, want to be you don't want to be so what if you get drafted to a team in a go? I'm gonna love it there. That's different. <laughs> you didn't let me finish while I didn't like Columbia. Oh, continue. Also, continue. <laughs> it's an Ivy League school. Right. And don't get me wrong, getting a degree from an Ivy League school is amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of work, man. True. You know? True. You on the way to get your master's right now, though. Yeah. You, you're doing a lot of work yeah. at Mercer. Yeah, I done grew up and my mindset is different. <laughs> when I was an 18 year old kid getting ready to go to college. Right. Like, I'm not going up there. Right, right, right. It's cold. And I'm not going to the military. I'm sorry. I don't blame you. I couldn't have did that either. Yeah, that, that, that was out the question. I couldn't have did that either. Coach Kronick, I'm assuming, had a pretty big impact on you coming here as well. You were a big fan of how he So, so Coach Kronick wasn't here when I got here. Oh, really? I, was See, here. I didn't know that. Yeah, know so that. when I got – I was recruited by Bobby Lamb, head coach Bobby Lamb. Okay. So he was the inaugural coach for the Mercer Bears team for them when they got reinstated in 2013. Mm -hmm. So he was my coach for my freshman year. Uh, and they let him go, unfortunately, and that's when Coach Cronick got here. Mm -hmm. But when Coach Cronick got here, that's when COVID hit. So right. we were kind of just like, what are we doing? Like, mm -hmm. I'm still trying to get to know you, but it's over Zoom, not face-to-face. -face. Right, 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 right. Uh, they kept Coach Adams, who was our defensive coordinator my freshman year, which turned out to be my safeties coach. Okay. And, you know, he's been a uh, father figure, older brother, one of the coolest people that I've been around. Right, you know? right, right. And I can do nothing but thank him and give him credit because, you know, he stuck with me. And he's been by my side throughout all five years. So. Right. Five years. Right now, the transfer portal is huge. Yes. And you had, again, a rap sheet of just accomplishments. Did you ever think about leaving, testing the waters to get into a bigger program or a bigger school, or you just knew that you were laser focused on doing it here at Mercer? You know, I did think about it, but you don't, you don't want to hop in the portal, you know, looking for the greener grass or the better place, and you end up nowhere. Right, right. At this time, you know, I am, I'm a team captain, I'm a team leader, I have my brothers here. Like, there, there was nothing for me to be like, okay, I need to leave. Right, right. Like, I, I don't, I, I could go to a bigger school, but at the end of the day, if you can play ball, you can play ball. They're going to find you regardless. Right. I'm not going to go to a bigger school, but now I'm the fourth string because he's an FCS guy. He's already smaller. They're bringing in four or five-star recruits anyway. Right. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? 
you can just make a name for yourself here. Like I said, if you if you a baller, they gonna find you. So right. I wasn't tripping about that. We'll probably circle back around to talk a little bit more about the future as far as football. But earlier you mentioned growing as a person off of the field and things of that nature and being more mature. You talked about the jump from high school to college as far as athletically. What was the what was the adjustment personally as a student, as a regular person, you know, just on campus in in the community, student student body. What was that like? You know, and I, I was a a pretty well-known person in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I got here, you know, I, I'm a I'm a friendly guy. You know, you see me, you rarely anybody here rarely sees me, you know, sad, mad, or anything. I'm always smiling, joking around. So, right. you know, me personally, I had to learn to separate the two because mm -hmm. you know. What I was doing in high school, the joking in the classes and not really paying attention, but mm -hmm. I could still, because I was, I was a smart kid, right. so I could still get through it in high school. I got to college, it was a wake-up call. Okay. My first test, I got a 27. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. What class was it? Calculus. That sounds about right. Yeah, I ain't even, it, it, and it wasn't one of those things to where I could, you know, so I had to learn, like, you know, you gotta be on your P's and Q's, but you can still have fun, you just gotta separate it. Mm -hmm. So like, I learned that it takes time to study. Like I actually needed time to study to get my work done and do all these things before I could go have fun with my guys or, you know, go bowling or go out to eat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to learn to, you know, put things, prioritize. Right. Prioritizing was my biggest thing. And I had to learn how to go to sleep. I used to stay up playing a game all the time, wake up. What you playing? 2K, Madden. Fortnite? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Fortnite. P5? Fortnite's a good one. Huh? P5? Yeah. 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 I get it. You know what I'm saying? But I like, get it. <laughs> I, I had to learn how to go to sleep because I'm waking up at 6.30 for practice. Then I'm going right to class. Mm -hmm. Then I got to go to study hall. Where am I sleeping at? Right. You got to get your proper rest. So at this point, I'm going insane mentally because I'm tired. Right, right. So, you know, I learned I learned to do that and everything took a turn for the better for me. What was the adjustment as far as being away from your family? You know, you're not at home anymore. You obviously talked about being a big family guy. How was that being away from mom, dad, and siblings? Uh, you know that that was that was tough. Um, me being the youngest, I am the youngest. Uh, it was kind of hard for you know me to separate because you know my sister went to UGA and mm -hmm. she left two years before me. So you know living without her in the house was kind of it was it was different, but it wasn't different at the same time. Because mm -hmm. back then, me and my sister, you know, typical brother sister, we're gonna go at it, and mm -hmm. she did this to me, he did it, like arguing. So you know we we kind of we've definitely grown our relationship, and like you know I love her to death. And, but the thing that kind of was the hardest part for me was my stepbrother. Okay. You know, we're at the same age. He mm -hmm. went to go play basketball at Piedmont. I went to go play football here at Mercer. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're sleeping right across the hall. Like our rooms are right across the hall. So I, I can't get up and go mess with him when I want to, when I'm bored. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin, you know, he ended up going to West Georgia. So the three of us were inseparable and we split up. And that was probably the biggest thing for me. So, you know, we talk every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call my mom every Sunday, talk to my dad every Thursday, mm -hmm. you know. So I made sure there was a um, really good connection that I had with my family, just even though when I left. Right, All right. So you talk, we just talked about you leaving your family back at home. Now I want to transition into you finding your family here on campus. So I know this, but the people may not. Your introduction to Greek life came how? They really, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no Greek in my family. Right, right. Uh, I got down here, and that's kind of my teammates, my, mm -hmm. my college teammates. You know, I had some that were Kappas and some that were Qs, and mm -hmm. that's how I learned, like, you know, what Greek life was. And then you see on TikTok, like, oh, I don't want to pay for our friends. I don't want to pay to be in a, a group of friends. Mm -hmm. Like, what? So at this point, I got, I, I got this little bad thing in my head, like the stigma about Greeks in general, like right. regardless of – what frat or sorority was, it's like, okay, y'all paying for friends. Right, 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 right. So at this point, you know, it's like, I don't, I'm not doing it. Like, so initially I'm, you were against it. Yeah, like, I'm, okay. not, I'm not doing it. And COVID hit, you right. know. COVID hit, and I I'm st I'm still don't really know anything. And I'm not going to sit here and say I did research, because I definitely didn't. Um, <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Yeah, I, but something in my head clicked and was like, you know, you know, you know, Look it, look it up. Mm -hmm. You know, see, see what they do. See, because I had my sister had some friends who were Greek. Mm -hmm. I had I had a cousin and an uncle who were Greek, but I didn't really talk to them about Greek, Greek stuff. Life. Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're talking about ball every time I go see them. Mm -hmm. So you know, we got back to campus. And then you know what I'm saying. You see, you see Fall Twenty One, right? You know, with Phoenix the guys, line. <laughs> the Phoenix line, the, the guys. guys. And I'm like, you know what? 
well, let me let me do some now I'm now at this point now I'm gonna do my research. Right. You know what I'm saying? I see I see the guy, see the news back on campus, they on the yard again, having a good time. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's let's do it. Right. You know, and it was probably the best decision that I'd have made here at Mercer. You know, I done got a, a bond that I with my ten other line brothers, mm -hmm. catastrophe. Um, y'all just celebrated y'all two years. Yeah, I'm two now. I'm getting yeah. old. Yeah, congratulations again, yeah, brother. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, tight, absolutely. Tight. But yeah, like my uh, my guys, you know, even though half of them graduated right as mm -hmm. soon as we crossed, right. You know, it's a bond with them that I never, that I never take. Mm -hmm. My neos, my pro fights, you know, I love them to death, and that was that's a family that I've been around, you know, for two years. Mm -hmm. But it feels like I've known folks for five, six years now. And, you know, there's been nothing but love and support from my chapter, especially, mm -hmm. you know, that I've been able to push through hard times and tough times. And that was just my chapter. Like, it's noobs all over the state, all over all over the country, you know what I'm saying, that have been showing nothing but support and love for me as a person, especially on this journey of going, you know, to the league and trying to go pro. They've been nothing but supportive for me. So. Right. The bond is forever, man. What did what did you see from Fall Twenty One that kind of made you think, you know what, this is something that I would want to be interested in? Um, I don't, don't know really. You know, they they have. Well, did you know any of them before they crossed? I knew all of them before they crossed. Okay, you okay. know, I'm not gonna say we were friends. Like I'm not. We weren't ever gonna be. You know, let's go bowling together type, mm -hmm. or let's go get a drink or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I knew them. You know, I'm gonna dap them up when I see them at a right, party. Right, right, right. But you know, they. Where when I saw them cross, you know what I'm saying, and they probated, I was actually at a football game. Like, we mm -hmm. had a football game that next day. <clears throat> so I, I saw videos and clips from them on live. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it was just, for me seeing that video and seeing them, you know, the noobs coming back, regardless of how the video looks, you know, they'll probably kill me for saying something about that. <laughs> um, but Larry is in there. Is, is Larry yeah, still in there? I don't know. But if y'all want to look it up, look up. Don't Dale, do that. Don't Dale do that. Pie, fall. <laughs> 21 probate video. I love you guys, but wow. You should look it up. Wow. Um That's what you use your that's what you use your shot for? That's your first time using your shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, in terms of them, they were just it was just like, all right, the news back on campus. You know, as soon as they came out, they got right to work. Right. You know, there was no lacking around, no getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like they they came and immediately made an impact on that campus. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I can deal with this. I can rock with this. So right. I think I think I'm gonna give it a shot. Talk with my mama. Talk with my dad. Mm -hmm. It's like they were supportive. Not? Yeah. yeah. It was like why not? You know. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we ain't had no grease in my family. So realistically, they didn't know what I was doing, what I was getting into. Right. So they was like, go ahead. Right. Go be go be the first. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. So on the fall twenty one line, no athletes. No athletes. They're all athletes in their own way. No collegiate athletes, especially not to your degree. Okay. On Fall 21's line, right? Okay. You obviously were who you were as a football player and then decided to join the frat. Did you feel a certain type of pressure to put on as an athlete that's always in the limelight? Because I've, I've seen, of course, you get an interception, you make a big play, you throw the yo. Was that something that, you know, right after you crossed, you were like, this is what I'm going to do for the frat in my area? Or did you just, that was just something that was added to it? You know, they always say you don't ever let the letters change you. Correct. Uh, and so when I joined the frat, you know, at this point, I'm not really, I'm a good football player, but, like, I'm not popping. Like, I'm not the All-Americans and all that. Like, I, I'm the all-conference guy, but, like, right. I'm not known, known. So realistically, you know, when I joined the frat, you know, the frat was the, the frat. Hmm. And at this point, I'm still trying to better myself on the football field to become the best player I can be. So, you know, once I, once I started, you know, getting comfortable, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Let me use let me use my football, like my my skills and my abilities in football to, you know, go go tell the frat, like go show the frat off, you know. Mm -hmm. I make a big play, you know, I'm going to throw the yo. Facts. I remember I had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. It got caught back. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I sh I'm shimmying in the end zone. <laughs> so, it, it was it's it's just great to be around. And like I also had two of my LBs, I'm making sure I'm not tripping. Mm -hmm. Two of my LBs were also, you know, on the team with me. Right. So Drake, and Drake Turbo. Turbo. Brandon sure, Mays. So sure. shout out to guys. You know what I'm saying? We we over there like, all right, let's do this. But at the same time, uh, Gamma Zeta, Omega Sci-Fi, the Qs, mm -hmm. 
they crossed the line in spring 22 as well. Mm -hmm. So now at this point, it's us versus them. Like, who's going to put on more for, for their the chatter, right, for their frat? Right, right. So it's like, now it's just friendly competition because, like, the noobs are better than the Qs. Right. No, the Qs are better, you know, but we're doing more than them, so, like, we're better. So that that's really, and it just made it, like, just so much more enjoyable mm -hmm. because now you're playing for more than yourself. Mm -hmm. You talked about the support that you've gotten, not only from Theta Pi, but from the noobs all over Georgia and various, you know, locations. Give me a little bit of insight on what that what that is like, the bond coming from different schools, different states, and, you know, when you travel, because you do travel. When you travel, what it's like to be received by the brothers that's on different campuses? Man, I love it. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's people that I, I would never talk to, you know, that I would never meet without mm -hmm. the bond. Right. Uh, you know, I can fam you, you know, Larry LaFrance and Kendall Bowler. You know, those are two guys right there. They crossed last year, actually. Um, Larry went to my high school. He was like a little brother to me. You know, he was, I want to say, two years younger than me. Uh, played football with me, ran track. He was terrible at basketball. Um, but he, he crossed up there at FAMU, you know what I'm saying? And I made sure I was there for his probate. Right. Because, you know, it's one thing to, you know, be your brother. Mm -hmm. But, like, now when his brother turned into a frat brother, mm -hmm. which y'all still had that bond, you know, it's amazing. Right. Kendall Bowler, you know, he went to Mercer for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, he left, he transferred, he, he, he found his home at FAMU. Mm -hmm. You know, he crossed there too. You know, me and Kendall, I can stroll better than Kendall. And <laughs> pro I probably can jump higher than Kendall. But, like, you know, Kendall is a guy that has nothing but blessings coming his way because of the person he is. But, you know, I, I would never know because man, maybe I wouldn't keep checking up with Kendall if, to make sure that everything was straight if, mm -hmm. you know, neither one of us became news. May maybe it'd be like a once every two, three months. Right. But, you know, I talk to Kendall a lot. I make sure we good. He makes sure I'm good. Like, you know what I'm saying? But there's no telling what would happen if the bond wasn't the bond. Mm -hmm. JVP, Justin Harris. For sure. Lambda Delta. Yeah. Just on the phone with him yesterday. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mel, Femi, Taj. Mm -hmm. Like, the guys are the guys. Regardless. All different chapters, by the way. Yeah, those All are different, different chapters. chapters. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's <clears throat> nothing I can say about the bond because the bond has given me so much life and so much love, and I'm nothing but appreciated for it. What has been your biggest accomplishment, whether it be on the field or off the field, what's been your biggest accomplishment that you're the most proud of? Give my life to Christ. That's a good one. That's the best one. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's I nothing. I like how fast you answered that. There, there's nothing that, you know what I'm saying, the person that I am right now, the things that I've done today, the people I've met, the places I've been, mm -hmm. none of that would be possible if I, you know what I'm saying, without the Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Valid. Uh, so, you know, when everybody always asks me, like, Lance, you've done so much, you know, what do you do? I give thanks to God every day. You wake up, get thanks to God. You know what I'm saying? He he done brought me through some good times. He done right. got me out of some low times. Right. And everything in between. So he, he he is my Lord and Savior. He is my everything, my end all, be all. Uh, so yeah, that is the, probably the most proudest thing I've done. Now, second most proudest thing I've done. I don't know. I did I done did a lot of good stuff in my life. Uh, probably graduate <laughs> college. Okay. Debt free at that. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Well, Debt free well, at that. You know, might be debts and fat, all that fast food I ate. I can't. <laughs> you gonna make that back though? Yeah. You gonna make that right back? It's gonna go right back to the fast food. <laughs> so you, so we gonna get off topic. Ultra versus science. You're clearly an ultra singer, Chad Johnson. You know he don't believe in diet. He think you should eat whatever you want and go out there and perform. And then you've got the guys like the Brandon Marshalls who believe you know. You put put this in your body, it's gonna make you better. Would you? You're clearly on the side of Chad Johnson, right? I don't know, cause both of them have valid points. Okay. Um, like if you if you can play, you can play. Valid. So like your diet, your diet matters. Like let's not, let's not like mistake it here, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying. If if you want to eat a burger a day from McDonald's, like as long <laughs> as you still balling, like it don't matter. Mm -hmm. But if you want to feel the best, be the best person that you want to be, obviously your diet matters. Mm -hmm. Which is why you know what I'm saying people. When I got back, people told me I look I looked huge. Yeah, nah, you yeah 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 you came back wild. I wish we had the picture. I might send it to Quest so you can put it up here. No. But your comparison, no, you don't want to do that. My face was hideous, bro. No. Unless y'all bleeping out my face, so you can do that. We gotta talk to him. That's that's okay. we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk to the man. Okay, but we'll talk to the man. Yeah, you know yeah, that it, was it's nothing, different. It's that was different. nothing but that was diet, bro. That was diet and working out. Yeah. So you know I, I can understand the science part, but like also, 
as long as you eat what you want to eat, if you still gonna ball, you still gonna ball. It don't matter if you if you get busy. Yeah. It don't matter if you get busy. So when you when you have your children, if you plan to have any, just you know, in the future, are you gonna put them on to that? What you know now about dietary and all of that soon, or are you just gonna let them, you know what I'm saying, be kids, be a high school kid, be a college kid? Or are you gonna try to expose them to what you got exposed to earlier? Hmm. I'm gonna let them be kids. You know, I don't wanna be that I don't wanna be that father that, you know, is you're waking up and all, all you do is work out, work out, work out so much that you hate what yeah, you're doing now. Right, right, like, right, you, right. You can't take the love of the game away from the kids. Right. And that's where so many people mess up. But at the same time, when they get old enough to, like, start, you know, learning about the different things to do, like, mm -hmm. that's when I'm going to start introducing them to, like, you know what I'm saying, what you should eat. And I'm not going to be like, you have to eat it. Mm -hmm. If you want to eat it and you want to do this, you know, that's what you're going to do. Like, I'm not going to be that strict parent that is all that, you know, from – the birth like nah right we don't get strict for sure but <laughs> you know what i'm saying we not we not finna i'm not finna basically make them boys robots or girls <laughs> whether you know if i have a daughter right back to the bond what's been your what's been your favorite part of the bond traveling <laughs> that was quick <laughs> traveling. that was quick i ain't gonna lie it's only so much you know what i'm saying it's only so much fun you can have here in macon georgia bro we're in the middle of nowhere bro <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And guys come down here all the time, mm -hmm. and I appreciate it, and I love guys coming down here. Mm -hmm. But to me, I like going to, I done been here for five years. Right. I done seen just about everything I need to see. Correct. Take me over there so I can go, you know what I'm saying? Right. Go have some fun. Take me to FAMU. <laughs> Take me to Georgia Tech, you know what I'm saying? Thanks. Columbus State. Yeah. Like, let, let What's your favorite place to go outside of Georgia? As far as college campus. <clears throat> Mm. All right, I got I got like three. Go ahead. All good things come in threes. Exactly. <laughs> FAMU. Okay. FAU. Okay. <laughs> it's a tough one because you you be you be on the road, bro. You be on the road. You said no Georgia schools, right? Nah, we outside of Georgia. Oh snap. Yeah. Oh, what's your, play, what's your favorite place to go outside, like, outside of Macon, like, in Georgia? You give me that, too. No, I'll give you that one. Yeah, you I give, figure you, out my third. Yeah. But if your third is somewhere that's in Georgia, you could give me that one. Like, well, I don't, think, I don't think it's in Georgia. But, like, I'm trying to remember because I didn't. You be gone, bro. You be yeah. out. You be out of there. I think when we went to Providence. Oh, in South Carolina. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I, I, that technically wasn't a school. So it's Still, like, you was in the area, though. Yeah. Like, with the news. Because that was around what, like, South Carolina... Uh, we was balling at, what is that? Coastal, we was near Coastal. Coastal, okay, okay. But, so I feel like those are my three. Mm -hmm. Um, what about yeah. Georgia? Ooh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um. This being the toughest question for you is hilarious. UGA. Okay. Columbus State. Okay. Give me one more. Did you just go to Valdosta? Or you didn't mm -hmm. go? That was before Pro Day. Yeah, that was okay, before yeah, Pro Day. Yeah. I didn't go to Valdosta. You was locked in. Uh, Georgia Tech. Valid. Shout out yeah. to LD. Valid. Yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> you be traveling, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's such a hard question because, like, I have fun all the like everywhere. So now I feel like they're gonna be like, bro, Lance, you ain't right with our school. Like it's not even the Yeah, 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 not, yeah. It's just that. Like I love the chapters, bro. <laughs> I love the bond, bro. I just be we be we be rolling, bro. We be lit. We yeah, you be, be all over bro. the place. Yeah. So this obviously this interview is pre-draft, right after pro day. Hopefully we'll get another one with you after all is said and done and you're at NFL speaking into existence. Yes, sir. So I want you right now to give your future self a message. I want you to give yourself a, a message right now. Uh, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you are. It's on you. It's on you. Okay, it's your um, shot. It's your shot. Don't ever sell yourself short. You know, chase your dreams. Uh, things might get hard. They might seem bad. Uh, the Lord will pull you out of it. Trust your family. Love your family. Love the guys around you. And, you know, stay positive throughout everything that you go through. And you'll make it to the top. Valid. Valid. Anything you want to say to any of the NFL teams out there, real quick? 
Um, you know, if y'all do happen to see this, just know that you're going to get a guy who is a hardworking, you know, energetic player who will do nothing but bring up, you know, any anything that you put me to do, put me to the test, whether that be special teams, whether that be defense. Um, there to work. I'm doing to do nothing but work, head down work. We're gonna enjoy it because everything's a blessing that comes this way. Um, you know, so if you take a shot on me, you won't be upset and you won't swing and miss. I like that. That's a good one. We're gonna put that clip out first. Tight. We're gonna put that clip out first. Tight. Anything you wanna say to the nukes? And then we're gonna wrap it up. Uh yo to the oh uh, my fault. You know what I'm saying? My shirt. The noops. Yo, to the good noobs. You good, feel me? Good noobs only type. Valid. Um, Kaiji said he grilling. Uh, I'm going to drop the Addy. What? So whenever this air episode airs, like, you know what I'm saying, I'll have everybody pull up to his crib. Uh, he's buying all the food, buying all the drinks. He's doing it, only him. So, yeah. This is false. That's about this, it. This is false. It's not false. This is. I would love to host something though. I, I'm not opposed. It's not false. I'm not opposed. See, he just said it. See the way my bank account is set up. Me he buying everything it. is he crazy. He just said it. He I'll hosting. host. I'll and host cooking. for sure. I cook. Yeah, and you're gonna buy it. That's that's that we uncharted waters. Type type. It's different. My fault. My fault. But it's okay. It's all good. Hey, bro. I can't tell you how much it means that you took the time out of your busy schedule to join me on this interview, brother. I Thank appreciate you, for you having me. Absolutely. I appreciate you so much for. Helping me get into the bond. You know what I'm saying? I can't thank you enough for that. Through the highs, lows, the good and bad, you never gave up on me, never gave up on the process. And I appreciate you so much for that. I want to tell you that to your face. I want to tell it to you on wax, on camera. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for being the, the positive example and the shining light that you've been for the chapter, for the young guys, you know what I'm saying? For everybody. Really, and I'm super proud of you, brother. Super thank proud you. of you. Thank you very much. You're doing amazing things and you'll keep going. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Vote him for JVP. Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, JVP right over there. Not me. Come on. That was about Y'all know what it is. That, that was it. That I was appreciate it. that, brother. Hey, man, I love you. All right, man. Thank you so much. Hey, this has been another fantastic episode of Kappa TV. We will see you all next time. And per usual, we on that camera right there. Yo, Yo to the good news, man. Good news only. Yo.